Welcome to today's episode of HR Insight, where I simplify human resource concept. Today, I'm going to be exploring uh, a very common question that I'm often being asked on how to prorate salary. So how do we prorate salaries? Do we use working days or we use calendar days? All of that we'll be exploring on today's episode of HR Insight. Let's start by understanding what a prorated salary is. A prorated salary is when you divide an employee salary proportionally to the numbers of days worked compared to the agreed days. What this means is this, an employee, let's say for example, an employee is expected to work for 30 days, uh, but the employee worked for let's say 12 days. Now what that means is an employer would not pay for the days not worked, the 18 days not worked. So the employer will only pay for 12 days. The process of getting the amount of salary that will be paid to that employee is prorating salary, which means the employee will get the prorated salary for 12 days worked as against the 30 days the employee is expected to work. How do we now calculate the prorated salary? Now, in order to prorate an employee's salary, you would need to determine the numbers of days the employees worked for and multiply by what we call the daily pay rates so you get the numbers of days the employee has worked in that month then you multiply by the daily rate now the calculation of the formula to do this is this prorated salary is equal to the numbers of days worked multiplied by the daily pay rate now where the differences usually come up is how you get your daily pay rate now your daily pay rate can be calculated using any of these two formulas the daily pay rate is equals to the monthly pay or the monthly salary divided by the working days which means in this scenario you're using the numbers of working days within the month or you use the calendar days which means your daily rate can be arrived at by dividing the monthly salary of the employee by one either the working days or the calendar days now whichever of the two you choose to use is a function of your own organization but the most important part is the consistency of what you use but whichever of the two you choose to use try to be as consistent as possible don't use calendar days today and tomorrow you're using working days now we're going to be getting into excel now to check uh, what is really the significant difference between using working days and using calendar days so the question we're going to be working with is an employee resumed work on the 17th of june 2021 uh, we're expected to calculate uh, the prorated salary for the month if the monthly salary is 300000 Now, going by the calculation for prorated salary, uh, the prorated salary is equal to the numbers of days worked multiplied by the daily pay rate. Now, the daily pay rate we've already established uh, is monthly salary or monthly pay divided by either the working days all the calendar days and i'm going to be using both to illustrate this particular question now let's get into the uh, analysis proper so the very first day in the month of june is the first of june 2021 the start date of the employee that's the date the employee started work is 17th of june and the end date which is the month end uh, which is the last day in the month of june is 30th of june 2021 so now these are the critical things that you need to be able to find out what is the numbers of working days in the month of june what is the numbers of calendar days in the month of june now finding the numbers of working days in the month you can actually use an excel function called network days and to use that excel function you would uh, let me just illustrate that function all over again you will use equals to then evoke the network days then you will need a start date and an end date now in this scenario i want to find the numbers of working days in the month of june so the start date is the first of june 
comma why the end date is the end date in the month of june uh, which is started and i close bracket and it will give me 22 days to get the numbers of uh, calendar days in the month of june uh, it's a little bit of an interesting calculation you would subtract the two days from each other which is uh, subtract the first day in june from the last day in june now you will notice i added one day now this is because the first day is included now if i didn't include the the plus one i'm going to be having 21 days and we know that the numbers of calendar days in the month of june is actually 30 days so in order to account for that extra one day included i would add plus one the same logic is used to find the numbers of working days the numbers of working days worked by the employee and the numbers of calendar days worked by the employee all you need to do is to use your network days in this scenario the start date is the 17th of june that's the day the employee resumed and the end date will be the 30th of june and you would have 10 days of working days that the employee worked between 17th of june and the 30th of of june but if you were to look at the numbers of calendar days worked uh then you'll be looking at the subtraction of the two days plus the day he resumed himself because it worked and that will give you 14 days so we've been able to find the numbers of days worked in terms of working days work or the calendar days work the next conversation is what is the daily pay rate now to find the daily pay rate we would divide uh the salary of the employee by uh the numbers of working days so let me just write the salary of the employee here monthly pay the monthly pay is three hundred thousand. so i would um, format that for accounting purpose that's three hundred thousand. now what is the daily rate the daily rate will be three hundred thousand divided by numbers of working days that will give us a value that's 13,636 but if i use the calendar days to divide the monthly salary i will get a different value entirely you would notice that uh, for the first one is 13,000 for the second one is 10,000 the next conversation is so how many what's now the prorated salary for this employee now that we have the daily rate using working days and using calendar days now this is where the consistency comes in if you use the working days to divide the pay it means to get the prorated salary for that employee you must use the numbers of working days worked by the employee if you use calendar days to divide to get the daily rate always use the working day the calendar days that the employee worked to get the prorated salary so what this means is this for when the employee did 10 working days uh which is the day's work i will have 10 multiply by the daily rate for working days which is 13 and the salary that the employee will get at the end of the month will be 136,363 now in the scenario where i use the working day the calendar days to get the daily rate i would calculate how many calendar days did the employee work in that month which is 14 in this scenario multiply by the prorated uh the daily pay rate that i used using calendar days to calculate and you would notice that the employee now ha has worked one around forty thousand. so you notice that there will be slight differences in either using working days or using calendar days but as i said the choice of what to use will have been defined from your organization and consistency is critical either to use working days to parade or to use calendar days to parade the employee salary so i want to believe that has been very interesting all right i'm sure uh, i get into this conversations even in my compensation and benefit master class and i decided to put this video out to be able to elicit conversation so if you agree or disagree with me i will be checking in the comment section below to pick uh, your superior arguments either for or against the two sides of calculating prorated salary so thank you very much for watching today's episode i'll see you in the next episode